My name is Sergeant Joe Fink. I work from a 24-hour shift out of homicide. And this is my workshop. The part of town that everybody knows about, but that nobody wants to see. Good evening. I'm Paul Gannis. The Little Shop of Horrors is a 1960 American comedy horror film directed by the godfather of low-budget film, Roger Corman. Written by Charles B. Griffin, the film is a farce about an inadequate florist assistant who cultivates a plant that feeds on human flesh and blood. The film stars Jonathan Hayes, Jackie Joseph, Mel Wells, and Dick Miller, all of whom had worked for Corman on previous films. Produced under the title The Passionate People Eater, the film employs an original style of humor, combining black comedy with farce and incorporating Jewish humor and elements of parody film. The Little Shop of Horrors was shot on a minuscule budget of $22,500 in two days, utilizing sets that had been left standing from the film A Bucket of Blood. The film slowly gained a cult following through word of mouth when it was distributed as the B-movie in a double feature with Mario Bava's Black Sunday, and eventually also paired with The Last Woman on Earth. The film's popularity increased with local television broadcasts, in addition to the presence of a young Jack Nicholson, whose small role in the film has been prominently promoted on home video releases of the film. This was Jack Nicholson's first horror movie. At the time of shooting, he'd appeared in two films and worked with Roger Corman as the lead in the teen exploitation film The Crybaby Killer. Corman would go on to direct Nicholson in four more movies, The Raven, The Terror, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, and The Trip. Oh my God, don't stop now! Dr. Favre, it's been quite an afternoon. I can truly say I've never enjoyed myself so much. I'll recommend you to all my friends. Thank you, bye. Bye now. According to Jackie Joseph, Corman shot the film quickly in order to beat changing industry rules that would have prevented producers from buying out an actor's performance in perpetuity. On January 1st, 1960, new rules were to go into effect, requiring producers to pay all actors residuals for all future releases of their work. This meant that Corman's B-movie business model would be permanently changed, and he wouldn't be able to produce low-budget movies quite the same way. Trying to beat the deadline, Corman decided to shoot one last film, and scheduled it to happen the last week of December 1959. Interiors for the film were shot with three cameras in wide, lingering master shots in single takes. Roger Corman was known for shooting scenes with two cameras rolling at once, placed at different angles. He rarely shot retakes and spent very little time lighting the scenes. According to Nicholson, we never did shoot the end of the scene. This movie was pre-lit. You'd go in, plug in the lights, roll the camera, and shoot. We did the take outside the office, and then went inside the office, plugged in, lit, and rolled. Jonathan Hayes was up on my chest pulling my teeth out, and in the take, he leaned back and hit the rented dental machinery with the back of his leg, and it started to tip over. Roger didn't even call cut. He leapt onto the set, grabbed the tilting machine, and said, Next set, that's a wrap. By 9 a.m. of the first day, Corman was informed by the production manager that he was behind schedule. Exteriors were later directed by Charles B. Griffith and Mel Wells over two successive weekends with a whopping $279 worth of rented equipment. I don't think you could rent one light in Hollywood for that today. Many exterior shots were filmed in downtown L.A.'s Skid Row, where the story is set. Griffith and Wells spent a total of $1,100 on 15 minutes worth of exteriors. The same music score for Little Shop of Horrors may sound familiar to some people. It was used in a total of seven different films, including The Wasp Woman and Creature from the Haunted Sea. Corman had initial trouble finding distribution for the film, as some distributors, including American International Pictures, felt that the film would be interpreted as anti-Semitic, citing the characters of Gravis Mushnik and Sidi Shiva. Mel Wells, who is Jewish, stated that he gave his character a Turkish-Jewish accent and mannerisms, and that he saw the humor of the film as playful and felt there was no intent to defame any ethnic group. The film's critical reception was largely favorable. Variety magazine wrote, The acting is pleasantly preposterous. Horticulturists and vegetarians will love it. 
Jack Nicholson marveled at the positive reaction at a screening of the film, stating that the audience laughed so hard I could barely hear the dialogue. I didn't quite register it at first. It was as if I'd forgotten it was a comedy since we shot it. I got all embarrassed because I'd never really had such a positive response before. Without a doubt, that positivity has lived on. The Little Shop of Horrors is a tasty treat among all cult film fans. Until next time, the popcorn's ready. Enjoy the film. Boy, what I did. 